Today on Black Twitter Talk, we are talking Chrisette, Chrisette Michelle performing for Trump and all of the inauguration protests and more. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to Black Twitter Talk. We back, y'all, and we bad and bougie today. I'm your host, Angie Skate. You can find me on Twitter, at Angie underscore Skate, and on the gram at Big underscore Ange. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm Kels. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Urban Gypsy LA. My song. Hey. And you know after Donald um, Glover shouted this song out at the Golden Globes, it went to number one? Yep. Everybody know who they are now. And he compared that. this to the Beatles. He like, did. I thought that was that interesting. That was amazing. Like culture, right? <laughs> I love it. Like it's a whole thing going on that everybody don't know about, but it's big. Yeah, and we love it. Hey, hey. Let's get into it though. So I know we had a full weekend of inauguration and protest. Yes, we did. <laughs> Um, and Chrisette Michelle, we'll start with that, okay? Um, she is an R&B artist for a lot of y'all that are like, who? Um, <laughs> oh, shoot. And yeah, that's the truth. What was her last hit? Ooh. Ooh I think it was question. the first one. I think I'm just, wait, I'm just about tired of being your girlfriend. Yeah, that was a good Girl, one. Girl, that was the only one I know Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and that was like, what, 10 years ago? Probably. Yeah, man. So she hungry, probably. I don't know. But she performs um, at Trump's Liberty Ball. And um, she kept it secret from the, her fans for a long time. Mm-hmm. And she recently um, announced it. And she had this post that she put up. Uh, she pinned an open letter that she put up on social media. It didn't make any sense to me. Like, it was incoherent. It was all over the place. It wasn't very well thought out. I'm just like, Chrisette Michelle, what are you talking about? Yeah, I think she may have quoted um, Martin Luther King in a few of it, and people are on their head saying that you took it out of context. If you read the full passage of what he's talking about, you're not on point. MLK is often taken out of context. Right. Yeah, I always take, like, the very, oh, everything is good and peaceful when that's not even his whole thing. No. Um, and then... They also, someone also made fun because of the the typeface and font and stuff that she used. They're like, we could barely even see it. Like, you just keep making all these bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Twitter went at her, and <clears throat> apparently the rumors started that she was making 750 k for this appearance. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what for Michelle. I can't even know her name. Chrisette Michelle. Chrisette Michelle. And um, it was actually 250K, but we a lot of people are saying she's hurting for money. Like, when has she had, like you just yeah, we said. We just discussed, like, we can't remember a hit just since our very first project. I've heard rumors, too, in Hollywood that she's a diva. Is, I've is actually... That true, don't do that. I've <laughs> actually... <laughs> like met her or have been camera operator um for a couple events that she was at where we were interviewing her and I don't know I guess from her music and her style of music and then she had her whole bohemian phase I expected her to be very um you know the type of person that like operates off of energy and vibes spiritual spiritual and and, you know right but she was like the complete opposite she came off very standoffish and very like posh and above that I'm like she didn't want to interview ever and I'm like well what, you, like, what you doing you, here exactly who Wh- which one yeah like you don't even have a hit out right now like mostly those are the people who need to interview on the red carpets because you need more press yeah, yeah. yet you look like you're mad that we're asking you questions like yeah what's the so, problem um she's been getting a lot of backlash but one person that stands out to me or and stood out on black twitter was Spike Lee mm-hmm. um you know that he's working on his uh series for Netflix um, that this do the right not no, do the right thing she's got to have yeah, it yeah she's got to have it Nola Darling that's one of my on favorites on Netflix yeah on Netflix and he was uh, going to use her song Black Girl Magic for I haven't even heard I haven't song. even heard the song I didn't even know she was recording music still um but he decided he said sister girl something something like nah he ain't using it and then her response to Spike was f you right mm-hmm. well you going to f Spike but what about Dono <laughs> I don't know. I guess in her little open letter, she's trying to say that... Because she's not the only one. Steve Harvey met with him, too, and he got a lot of backlash for meeting with Donald Trump as well. He did, and his wife was like, Steve, (laughs) that ain't happening. Yeah, but everybody's trying to say, like, well, you have to have the conversation or be open. But I'm just like, I feel like it was for the money, period, point blank. She needed the money, and that's why she did it. 
And I'm not mad about her getting her coins, but I'm just like, maybe if you didn't have such a bad attitude on the red carpet, you might get some more work. I don't know. Like Michelle, uh, Michelle, I don't know why I want to call her Michelle. I'm thinking of the other Destiny Child member, too. Oh, no, too. That, that she far from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Chrisette, Michelle, I hope you get it together, darling. Um, yeah, so... On to the inauguration, mm-hmm. and I didn't watch it. I skipped it, didn't like it, but I saw all the memes of Michelle Obama's face, and I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I watched that part where, um, wait, which part? Because she stayed giving faces. She was giving throughout faces the throughout the whole thing. But the part when Donald Trump and Melania come up, that's her name, right? No, Melania. Melania. She walks up and gives her the Tiffany box, and then she she's looking like, well, why'd you give me this? Somebody <laughs> put on Twitter, um, like Melania's trying to give her back her, her speech. speech. <laughs> And Michelle's face was gold. It's just like, yes, because that's how we feel right now. You're giving us life, Michelle. Right. It's interesting, though, because it's like, how do you greet somebody who literally stole your speech verbatim? Like, how do you even, how do you even stay face and be like, hey, girl, hey. Speaking of stealing speeches, (laughs) Donald Trump's speech, um, I saw where he plagiarized from Avatar. And then he also plagiarized from Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, This is exactly how this whole thing feels. Like, we're in a Marvel comic book movie. And I was thinking, too, because politics is not necessarily our favorite thing to cover. But it's like, it's at this point, politics has become entertainment, in a sense. So, it's like, it's hard not to cover it because it's like we're watching a reality TV show. Yeah, so he was uh, doing a press conference at the CIA. And all he did was talk about how much media lies and how he had a bigger crowd at his inauguration. Like... What the heck is... I don't... No, he didn't have a big crowd at the inauguration. Nothing (laughs) like what um, Barack Obama had. And then, I mean, I guess he could have had a bigger crowd, but there were a lot of people who were blocking off the entrances. Yes, and then um, we all know that the Women's March over the weekend had bigger numbers than the inauguration. Way bigger numbers across the world. World. Not just even in America, either. It was like 673 marches uh, worldwide. um, Over There's like millions of people that were involved. And even in really small cities, like in Alabama, I forget the name of the city. Um, but it was like 350 populated people in that town and 50 of those people protested so Mm -hmm. and like it was worldwide it was crazy and I just think that it's interesting to see the turnout for these marches right right it's like you had women of all ages men Mm -hmm. too like race size gender sexuality everything we're all unified in that and um beyonce attended janelle monae performed uh did she perform or she spoke she i saw her speak i didn't see her perform okay well maybe she spoke she i just love she's so eloquent (laughs) she's so good go see her movie hidden figures if you haven't seen it already um, um, but it was a- Tracy Ellis Ross and Yara Sahidi. Did I say her name right? It's, I think so. I'd be so scared to say her name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Yara. Yes. <laughs> um, they had introduced, um, dang, I can't remember her name right now. The mama from Love and Basketball. <laughs> the mama? Yeah. Oh my oh, gosh! I okay, don't yeah, that. a lot of people came out. It was a huge turnout. And huge. I, it was. It, and Debbie Allen was there dancing at the one in LA. And then there were a lot of events going on this weekend too. Solange performed at the Afam Museum in DC. Mm-hmm. Angela Davis spoke there as well. So everybody is just like getting really active, mm-hmm. and we're getting connected, and I'm really inspired by it. But I couldn't help but notice the difference in. The way that this protest was supported versus Black Lives Matters protest. Right. And I was having a very candid conversation with a couple of my buddies who happen to be white guys from, you know, middle America. And um, they're, like, really pumped, and we had to work this weekend. And he was just bummed that he couldn't be there to protest. And I'm just like, Blake, like... Oop, I said his name. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> just kidding. That's not his name. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, why are you, like why now are you so fired up? He's just like he just feels connected, and I'm like, okay. And his brother, who is his twin, since it's all out there now, he's like, yeah, Black Lives Matter, and I'm like, oh, Black Lives Matter, really? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, but you've never 
vocally, openly supported that movement. Mm -hmm. Why? And he was really honest with me. He said he never felt connected to it. Like, he never felt like it was a part of his struggle or his, mm -hmm. like, he, he's disconnected from that. Right, and that's what a lot of people's response to the Women's March has been. They're saying, okay, well, where were you guys when Sandra Bland was killed? Where were you guys when we were getting shot every other week last year and the year before that? And we were out there protesting. You guys weren't there. So how all of a sudden are all these people there and human, it's all about human, human rights? Well, we're yeah. human too. Yeah. But I think that is the thing. I, I feel like everyone was disconnected and it felt like, oh, black people are just overreacting. Oh, they should just comply. Oh, they should just do that. But then now everybody's in a position where some of their human rights are being taken. It's like, oh, now I get it. Now it can affect me or my sister or my mother personally. So now, you know, I want to get out there and say something. I want to know how many of those women that attended the march <clears throat> this weekend, 53% um, of y'all voted for Trump. <laughs> and I'm talking about white women. I just want to know how many of y'all were represented this weekend. I'm curious in that, too, because that was a lot of people for us to not, for Trump to be the president, but all these just, <laughs> it's like, wait. How, how come we didn't... Something's not something's adding, not up, adding up But we already know it's not adding up. Um, and then I think, too, because um, people... St I still think some people still have negative things to say about the Black Lives Matter yes, movement. Tom Tommy, Tammy. Yeah, we don't even need to give her no airtime. Okay. But, yeah, um, not j her and probably A lot people of that people think like her. Yeah. But I feel that all the legwork that the Black Lives Matter people did or organization did is what even gave this the legs that it did like I feel like we've inspired so many people to actually get up and go out and protest I think so too and then um, they were juxtaposing the violence that was surrounded um, around the Black Lives Matter movement saying take a note from this peaceful protest like we had millions of people worldwide and there were no violent um, upheavals or mm -hmm. you know but i saw lots of people vandalizing starbucks like setting cars and bank on of fire. america and people yeah. are like why well these are companies that support trump too, yeah right? yeah yeah and i get all of that but like at the same time your resistance was not met with cops and tear gas and rubber bullets like your cops were on the street smiling and waving and supporting and joining you. in so when our movement when our black people our black men and women are being gunned down every day by you know, police violence, and you know, and we're countered with that when with we're peacefully same, protesting. Because right. it starts peacefully, and then they show up in SWAT gear and start and shooting, shooting into stuff, crowds mm -hmm. and, just, and blockading you and making you feel like you're trapped and you're doing something wrong. Because we're under attack now. Right, right. And so there, there's no comparison. And to all of the people that are making, drawing that comparison, I implore you to look at the differences in the way that your resistance was met by the police. Mm -hmm. And then we want to discuss how media lies and things like that so for the black lives matter movement if you got all your information from a cnn or some of these news outlets they're only going to show you the same loop of somebody looting and showing out and doing something opposed to what was really going on which is why black twitter was very very important during that time because we would see live footage of what was actually happening and people on the ground were reporting and i think Lies. that's when we saw the shift in black twitter mm -hmm. um it became the forefront of the revolution right which is why we do this show y'all hey. Hey. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that th those are highlights from the inauguration, right? right? Uh, yeah. One thing that you said earlier, too, I wanted to touch on with Angela Davis mm -hmm. and Solange. Angela Davis actually introduced Solange, yeah. and she said that her album and her music was the anthem for the protest. And I just, I wanted to say that because I think that's powerful and it true. It's very powerful. I love <laughs> me some Angela Davis, and I also love me some Solange. Yes. So, yes. It was a good weekend for us, y'all. Good weekend, good weekend. And we're going to have to do more of that to get through these next four years. Yeah, like that has to, that Woo! process has to be us for the next four next years. Next four years. Let's get to work, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, so, ABC's Blackish. We talked about this amazing show that they had last week um, with Anthony uh, Anderson's monologue. And I, there's news for Yara Sahidi. We love you, girl. Um, yes. Yeah, so, she's set to get her own spin off from the show. Right? So it's kind of like the modern day Cosby's, right? Mm -hmm. Blackish. And then we had A Different World, which is one of my favorite sitcoms ever. Like it changed my whole life. Right. Um, it gave me an accurate mirror <laughs> representation of how I saw myself. You right. Know? She has a spin off where she's going to go to college yes. and do her thing. I'm really excited about this show. Um, like if it's anything like I think it's going to be, it's Kenya Barris and. Um, 
Larry Wilmore. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. I I'm can't excited wait. I'm excited, too. She's one of my favorite characters. And then just her as a person and seeing everything that she's done as an individual, I feel like the show is going to match her. It's going to be, I think, almost about her life if she were to have gone to college. Because I yeah. don't think, she, I think she probably does homeschooling or something. Yeah. And then I'm curious to see, like, who her classmates are going to be. Like, will we get Amanda Steinberg? Did I say her name right? Yeah. I'll be saying all these girls' names wrong and I'll be feeling bad. <laughs> but we love um, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I I just want to see. I, I'm excited too. I'm excited. I think it's I gonna be amazing. Wait. It's supposed to drop this spring, so you guys keep a lookout for that. Mm-hmm. And my girl Easter Ray, you know we love her. Um, and Jesse Smollett from Empire, mm-hmm. they're teaming up to do a web series called Giants. Okay, and we know Easter Ray can do no wrong. She's really good at what <laughs> she does. Um, so it's a scripted series about three black min- millennials who are nearing thirty. <laughs> and I'm um, trying to get it together and explore themes of mental health and sexuality and p- police brutality. And these are all things that we're struggling with on the daily. So I'm really excited to see how this unfolds. And did I say the project is called Giants? Yeah, you did. All right. I'm excited about that, too. And I just think it's very interesting because we see Issa Rae, who has a very successful show on HBO. And then uh, Justin, who... Jesse. Jesse, who's on um, Empire, Empire. Yet they're creating a web series. I just... I think it just speaks back to the fact that the web and that streaming and all that stuff is very powerful and that you don't necessarily need a full-on production or a major studio major studio to support your project because i'm pretty sure they could have shopped this idea to somebody else but i have a feeling that they didn't want to i feel like they wanted it to be raw they wanted to have the control over it so i'm excited about it i'm really excited about it and i think that web content is where it's at where it's that's the future Mm -hmm. so um yeah um, did you hear about Malia Obama? What happened? So we know that she's going to Harvard in the fall, but she's doing uh, an internship with Harvey Weinstein, mm. who is like a huge Hollywood producer. I, I, I'm really excited to see how these girls grow up and, and find their footing. Um, yeah. Me too. I, I also heard rumors that D'Angelo has a new album coming out. He had us on a 14-year hiatus before he dropped The Black Messiah. Mm-hmm. And rumors have it that he is working on a project now to be... You know, they be very soon. I didn't hear that. I'm curious to see what he does next. Do you think it'll be like Black Messiah again or I don't know. He's such a genius. Yeah, you don't even know. I don't know. Um, but I am I'm very I can't I feel wait. like he's one where you can't really have expectations because He's like a true artist, so it just depends on where he is in his art and in his, as an individual, what he'll produce. Well, we know he he won't rush it. He's going to take his time. <laughs> we know that's we know for that's sure. For sure. <laughs> um, I think that's it. I'm tired of talking about Trump and stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, that was the biggest thing that happened this yeah, week, that's too. Yeah, that's all Black Twitter talked about, and um, I'm over it. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, we will be back again next week. I am your host, Angie Skates. You can find me on Twitter at Angie underscore Skates. And what's up? I'm Kelly Skates. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at The Urban Gypsy LA. Thanks for coming by. We'll see y'all next week. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.